you know, say you're playing a golfing light or something to start the charge for the combo, you can Snapdragon to preserve one in soul is the right. purpose of that. So with no room boots, we know for a fact, uh, Josh is probably trying to fatigue you. I wonder if uh, his opponent will pick up on that as quickly. Uh, well, I didn't until you... I was, I was looking for still by chance, but... <laughs> <you know. laughs> And this is always good, presenting damage. So this does not mean anything that he's charging here. Uh, you never are worried about running out of cards in the opposing player because Chain's gonna burn through cards so quickly. Um, so he's just trying to really, the goal here is to get a card. He doesn't yep. want to do damage. He wants to, he wants to uh, he get a card. Yeah, a card or two here. That's one or two cards less that he has to block. Yep. And uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but another indicator of fatigue is uh, present at the moment. Can you see it? Oh, the, uh, what is that? Imp Impenetrable belief. belief. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, that's not a very oh. well-known card. Can you oh explain to everybody gosh. what that does? Oh my gosh, look what he cards he got out of his deck. Okay, those are, those are good those are good cards. I don't <laughs> think he's aware that the fatigue plan is, <laughs> I don't is in think effect. He knows. <laughs> Because those oh, yeah. cards are gas. <laughs> Impenetrable belief. Um, if your opponent has banished a card, I believe it gets plus one or two block. Okay. Uh, um, I believe that's what it does. I would have to double check. It's been a long time since I've played the card. Okay. But uh, it is very good against chain for when you're going for the fatigue. The prisms used to run it. Actually, I believe Tyler ran it against uh, Sebastian in the finals. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right, so we have identified that Josh is probably on a fatigue yeah, strategy. Plus two while defending. Question is, because I think that's what separates the great chain players from the average ones is the ability to navigate a fatigue strategy with a clean 60. Yep. Agreed. Reek of Corruption, uh also leads me to believe that uh, he's running a very linear deck. Yeah, he's, he, it seems like he's running that anti-Starvo disruption, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually very bad to run into fatigue, because then you're you're just not doing anything. You saw a quick uh, Josh snapped off two card yeah. block on that. Yep. <laughs> fatigue confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, though, uh, it does look like the chain player is like trying to hold back a little bit. Maybe it was just because he didn't have a blue. That could be a possibility, but you know, keeping he that arsenal. shackled still, which um, he wants to get to that first shackle. The four red cards in hand, I believe it was, um, really stinks on your turn one. Um, but he's just trying to build up. Uh, if he was able to put an Art of War or something like that in the arsenal, that's where he's gonna, that's right. where he's gonna find his, his strong plays. Being able to chip away a little bit here and there, but then build up for those really strong plays is going to be how he's going to win. He's going to have to use his life total as a resource by letting his banish zone eat some of his life total some turns so that it builds up a little bit more um, so that he can break through Josh's defenses. I actually really like that block by the chain player and the thought process behind that is for those of you who don't know the bolt of courage is a draw card on hit card mm -hmm. and it was coming in for two and it's like okay well josh is fatigued and why do we care about drawing cards it's a one more chance higher that he draws a defense reaction to put an arsenal and now he has five cards to yep. versus four so that's yep. the big so I really like that play by the chain player to deny that card draw in a lot of cases where it seems irrelevant. Yep. So great Agreed. play there. Agreed. And, it, and it's not like he's going to need the armor later on. It's not a big deal. Nobody's yep. going to be taking it. They're carrying Husk. Uh, right. It's going to cause him problems later, actually, instead of help him. Exactly. Which is another reason that the chain players are actually bringing in Aether Iron Weave and the... Um, Oh my goodness. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, he had the double Art of War. That's always better than... That's always better than banishing it, obviously. Um, however, you have to be super careful, right? Because the the way the math works out, if you run a clean 60, you shackle every turn, 
typically the first four cards that you pitch are the cards that you draw on your last big turn. And uh, that's the way the math works out. If you, you know, banish one, banish two, banish three, and so on. So, Assuming he uh, shackles every turn, right? Correct. He has to shackle every turn or it throws everything off. And then you also have to factor in, you know, obviously it's not a factor anymore, but like cards like that, right? So Shadow but, Pub Tree. Here's he the big problem. The card banishes it. Here, here's the big problem with the new chain build. The little. Right. They are it's shuffling shuffled. their deck constantly. So they pretty much randomly banish at the end nowadays because of how much they're they're actually digging through their deck with them and it well, was a, it, a little if you're if you're playing anti-fatigue in the with chain i don't mm -hmm. think there's a situation where you ever shuffle your deck yep but he's already then, he's already pitched a little i believe so i know right, he's playing because, yeah and, and i mean you still play it but you just never go and fetch a minnowism because Oof. then you're just leaving it up to luck is all you're doing and then right. here goes Josh having the perfect block with the uh, the soul shield. <laughs> also gonna that's pump a... that pump that soul at the same time, and then if he just randomly draws double Lumina at some point in this game, <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the end of the? Is, wait, what is he doing? Oh, is he just closing the chain? No, there's gotta be something else. Yeah, he, yeah he's, he's shackled. Yeah, yeah okay. Okay, let's well, say so he's gotta be doing something else. Yeah, because Shadow Puppetry gave the Rift Bond go again, so now he's shackling yep. to give the next thing go again. Yeah. Still has the one resource floating and the plus one floating on the Art of War for all attack actions. Yep. Yep. Uh, does not affect the weapons. He's shackling, next thing's going to have go again. I guess maybe he's deciding whether to play out this bounding or if he has a better option in his hand for the go again. I think you always play an attack from your hand if you can, of course. Oh, yes. It's Absolutely. always situational. You really want to bank those boundings, unless that's a blue yep. one. Is that a it, blue it one? Is a, it is a blue one. Then you probably just go ahead and get it out of there. Uh, it's not really a high-value target. He's running a clean 60. The chances of him running Eclipse are pretty low, I would say. Uh, possible, but low. Um, so Now that you've seen defense reactions from your opponent and you haven't even hit them yet, you, you need to find a way to do some damage on this Art of War turn. Right. If he plays an Art of War and doesn't get any damage in, that is... You can pretty much bad. count the game being over at that point if, if that happens. Right. right. Not only that, but it was a Rift Bond, an Art of War, and a Shadow Pup. That are That is three of the best cards in... Oh, yeah. One Art of War and two Shadow Pup tree gone now. All right. So we have the Bounding coming in for three. So that'd be a clean block. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, the problem here is like, sure, you can you can pitch a card in Rosetta, but now you still have just an extra card just floating. It's also got three uh, cards, so you could make a Creeper's play here now that Josh is low on cards. Yeah, but like, what would you Creeper here? Is the like a Minnowism? Uh, pitch a blue for like a Howl from beyond and do like a bigger attack, or... I, I really don't know. There's lots of cards in the deck, but Soul Reaping is a very good one. Banishing a... Rebel? Why didn't he? No, he just play the rebel. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Because rebel is like the card you. That want. is the it's, card. Yeah, because there, huh. there's a lot of. So there's no value off of the soul reaping here, other than six damage. No go again because you've already used your. Yeah, that one. That one. That one baffles me a little bit. Re Rebel is so good. Yeah, I, w I would almost rather pitch the Soul Reaping and play the Revel and swing Rosetta. Because exactly. The, the thing that you have to keep in mind, playing against Bolton, right? What color in his deck does he have more than any other? Yellows. Yep. Because that's just the way, I guess, light heroes work. Um, and... How does that go again? doesn't oh because he has a card and soul right oh the soul reaping oh yeah okay that's there is bad. more text there is more text okay. on soul all right reaping. yep yep that's not bad okay he, he redeemed himself <laughs> so, i still would have reveled but 
in that case, what I might have done is I would have banished the vexing and pitched the revel. Yeah, at least keep the revel in your deck. Yeah, and that, that's a better card in the deck. Um, we did get nine cap. damage through, so that's something. Okay, that is, a, that is a start. The banishes came out, and it was another bounding. This one yellow uh, yep. and a mavrin. However, probably playing nine boundings would be my guess. Yep, and this this time, however, chain only has a. A four card hand so the hard part for josh is he really has to like okay this is my turn to get a d react into arsenal if he doesn't already have one yep um and he's gonna kind of has to play that game on these up and down yeah. turns do you think a card in arsenal right now is like a, a beacon or a luminaire or something i think if it is i think it was a misplay um because there's no way with husk that you close this game out with the combo and you would have to take so much damage on the turn that you're trying to combo mm -hmm. that it, it would so this is a big off turn for a chain if he's just pitching the swing the sword okay so this is just an off turn for chain because this is just for two didn't even pitch to make a reach in i've played against a lot of chain players who like to start their turn with this just to get like a, a pitch for, for later. I, I don't really fully understand the power of, of hitting with the Rosetta first like this. Um, I mean, you're basically saying I'm not playing a non-attack and an attack this turn. Right. But, it, it, that's my beef with it is it gives so much information. Right. Which is not what you want to do when somebody's trying to fatigue. Josh is happy to just put a card in front of this uh, and say, you know, what are you doing with this turn? <laughs> Probably okay. gonna bank this yellow bounding for next turn would be my guess. Plenty of life total to work with. Yeah, probably just flock, reveal, make a quicken token, bank the bounding. Is that a lead the charge? It is. It's a red one, right? Interesting. Yep. Yeah, it looks like a red one. All right. So, so is zero cost or greater, or is it just zero cost? I can't remember. Uh, it's zero cost or greater. And so now he'll have the lead the charge in arsenal. He'll have the quicken token. So next turn has the opportunity to be huge. Um, you think and, uh, fate foreseen taking a damage here means that he's actually going to attack this turn, or? Yeah, yeah. It means that he's trying to get the card out of arsenal, probably. So it's yeah. probably like a yep. That so makes sense. Getting the card out, he's charging a card and getting that D react into arsenal. That's so important. And him charging the beacon of victory right there is a good indicator that he is not trying to do yep. the combo as a backup plan. His sole priority is to just live. Yep. Another key thing here is uh, this uh, Bolt of Courage is four damage if he blocks with an attack. Um, and most of his non-attacks block for two. So um, this either is going to eat some equipment or two cards if he's trying to block it usually. Now, the, the point that I made earlier on blocking the Bolt of Courage decreased the chance of, of the Bolton player drawing a defense reaction. I don't think it applies on this one. Because yeah, for sure. he's holding a card in hand for a reason, and he has no intentions on playing it, and he took damage last turn. So that, therefore, that automatically means that is a D-react. So it, it doesn't get any worse. Um, so... I actually favor, if I was a chain player, I would take this and just give him the card all day long and say enjoy. What the? Uh, That's oof. the third shadow puppetry. Well, I guess in this case it makes sense because he has the quicken token. He has a lead the charge in Arsenal. So he has four cards that give go again, but nothing to give go again to. So I <laughs> guess that makes sense. But if he hits a lot of attacks here. Oof. Okay. Is that a mutated mass? You know, uh, the that card is terrible. <laughs> nobody can nobody can tell me otherwise. <laughs> the the chain player that I lost against uh, in Indianapolis, uh, he ran those, and the second he banished it, I was they like, do work. No, he never played it. <laughs> uh, that card was not uh, that is not what won him the game. 
my hands and his hands is what, what won him that game. Um, but I had to like read the card. I was like, what is this? And uh, I, have I don't. I have looked at that card multiple times while building chain strategies. I could never justify playing it. Uh, I just it doesn't block in hand, and I, I don't know. It's it's an interesting card for sure. Yeah. Um. If if it was a so one thing that I had a conversation with somebody about is having one or two blue blood debt non-attack actions. Yeah, it could be important. The, right. That was why Seeds of Agony was so powerful. Yep, and there's just the fact that you can put it, you can you know block with it, play it, whatever, put it mm -hmm. in the graveyard, and then Unhallowed writes it to the bottom. Yep. If you start noticing that your blues are gone, yep. and you really need the blues at the end to push for the Eclipse play, um, but with it being an attack, uh, I don't. Maybe there's, I'm not sure. All right, clean block with a V of Vanguard, right? Is that yep. is coming in for three. Has go again. He has to, he has double go again because he's floating an action point. Hasn't even shackled yet, right? Uh, he just shackled right now, I believe. Okay, so it seems like he was just playing the lead charge to get it out of Arsenal and turn Rosetta on. Like there's another saying. mutated ass to the bottom. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna play this one and then I highly expect a Rosetta swing and then uh, and then a Arsenal. Just to be clear here, guys, I'm not making fun of his card decisions. I'm making fun of the card. The card, the card, yeah. the, the card, <laughs> the card it, it, to me is not good. Maybe he knows something about this card that I don't know. I'll never judge somebody on their card decisions. Yeah. <laughs> I just like to make fun of this card because it's very easy to make fun of. Another clean block here because that's only coming in for what like one or two damage or something right <laughs> i mean <laughs> another v gone Can you take some arcane damage there oh just so you can sigil makes sense See? oh gosh he's playing sigils too oh wow. no this is really wow. bad for chain why do you even need Arcane Barrier Sigil? That's pretty real. Has he How even pitched for Arcane once this game? I don't think he has. <laughs> we got four cards coming here. I'm going to guess one Blood Debt. Three, Three Blood Debt. And two of them are blue. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully he has uh some good non-attacks in hand to get the ball rolling he's got all three of his shadow puppetry's gone and one of his art of war is gone and one of them's on the bottom of the deck so he's got one art of war left in the deck that was gonna be seen anytime soon um when, whenever i'm playing against chain and i'm trying to fatigue them um i count the three mavern skies the three art of war and the three shadow puppetry those are their sources of go again Right. Um, once Which, those are, once those are gone, your job becomes much easier. Two shadow puppetries have been blocked with. A Mavrian's been banished. Mm -hmm. So and it, uh, you saw two lead the charges go in one turn. And some so of them are playing these captains' calls too. But right. Uh, just for the viewers as well, the deck counts. Uh, Bolton's currently sitting at forty-one cards in deck, not including hand. Chain is sitting at thirty-five. In deck. Josh still being higher than 30 life on Shackle 5. Um, he's he's doing exactly what he wants to do right now. This is an Exude Confidence. That's a card you don't see every day in Chain. That card I can get behind. Well, Captain's Call up Yellow applies to one or lower, right? Yeah, it's one or lower. Yep, yeah, one or less, yep. So it does apply to the Exude Confidence. Uh, I do not anticipate him pumping it. Nope. Um, so I think a Sink Blow or a Fate is perfect. Well, you can't. You can't. Yep. yep. So uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> this is going to eat a card out of his hand instead. And then clearly, the next... cl yeah, clearly he's going to block with a Celestial Cataclysm. And I'm sure he's going to break the chain, right? So like... Okay. Oh, there it is. It's... 
Oh, that card's funny. Can he it play can that though? Is it an inst? Is it a? I don't know. It's just a block, and it gets plus two block when he's banished a card this turn. It's just That's... a five block. <laughs> That was <laughs> it's silly. <laughs> that is just good. The, the opponent had to read it. Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I've actually beaten Sebastian with that card before when I was playing Prism. Oh, man. Not the way you want to go. Not the way you want to go. That card is probably one of the worst cards ever printed, but has one utility, and that's to block against chain. So... We have an even block, we have two cards in hand, no resources floating, so we might possibly see a Shadowverser play loading the uh, loading the banner zone even more. Okay, this is a key moment. Does he decide to reveal and shuffle that deck? Huge decision. Can he resist the temptation? Okay, so he is going to leave this game up to chance and ruin <laughs> <laughs> All that pitch deck he just did. Okay, here we go. So he's going to go fetch a, what I would assume to be a red Minnowism because he already has the two floating um, and not a whole bunch of go again to further extend the play. <sighs> not a fan of this play, uh, for the record. I actually liked playing the Blittle, pitching the Mutated Mass, arsenaling the Mavrian um, for a go again card, and then just swing Rosetta after would be would be my line. Um, but, you know. I think your line's reasonable. Yeah, I mean, the, the cards that are in the Banished Zone, the only one that you don't want there is that Blue Bounding. Um, and you do not care about the blood debt damage at all. Taking three here is no. not I, 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 your, your life anyway. total is meaningless in this game, right? Uh, until so, you have no deck left. So anytime, as long as you can make out good lines, anytime you have more options, theoretically it should be proportional to damage output of that turn. So I really like the idea of just keeping that Mavrin in Arsenal for that big turn. Because Mavrin is just such a good card, now you're just increasing the chances of banishing that card after you, we've already seen collectively, what, eight go-again cards, quote-unquote. Mm -hmm. um, bite the dust. So what's going to end up happening is Chain's going to start drawing those hands where it's just all attacks. And you're going to get to a mm -hmm. point to where you can't even play the boundings or the the uh, unhallowed rights or those cards out of the banner zone. You won't even have the option. From my experience, they play enough non-attack actions for that doesn't matter until they have like five cards left in deck because they'll unhallowed rights and recycle their howl from beyonds, um, and you'll get like an end game state where all you need to do is burn them through the uh, the unhallowed rights. Um, and then you don't have to worry about the sword swing anymore, and it's a clean win from there. Um, the eclipse throws the math off if they're playing eclipse, though. Do you know? Do you know what's happening here? Nope, not a clue. Like, shouldn't he just I've, I've been looking. At, I've been looking at the screen, <laughs> trying to figure out why they're not advancing. I mean, this is pretty easy. Shouldn't he just search for a minimalism? Like, what, what's, what's up for debate? I don't. Know. Oh. Belittle requires a card of three attack or less, and yes. Mutated Mass has a make of value, whatever, uh, asterisk. It's zero in every other. And reveal an attack action card with three or less base power. Yeah, it's a base power zero. They're doing a judge call. They are doing a judge call on whether the asterisk, star, whatever you want to call it. The same thing that's on a more familiar card to everybody is Fractal Replication, where it copies the you know the previous Herald cards before it. Uh, Mutated Mass does the same thing with the cards in your pitch zone. So the question in this call, in the judge call, is does, you know, currently Mavrian is the only card in the pitch zone so therefore the stats on mutated mass is two block 
with it's, nothing. Its power and defense is star even when it's in a zone that's not on the combat chain. For example, it has six power in hand if you have three cards with different costs in your pitch zone. Okay. Cards, so that would mean so, that its power is one right now, right? Oh, well, its power is... Because he has uh, one cost or one... Um, is blue pitch in his zone right now, right? So its power would be one, right? Well, no, it's the attack and defense of the card in the pitch zone, right? No. It's not? No. Mutated mass is um, power and defense equal to twice right. the number of cards You're in the right. pitch zone Dif with different, with different costs. costs. So it yeah. would be two right now. So it's twice the number, so it would be two. Yeah, so what... Uh, oh, so Josh is just wondering if in the hand counts as in a zone, I guess. Even when it's in a zone that's not on the combat chain. It says, um, for example, it has six power in your hand if you have three cards. So it, even in the rules here, it says in your hand. So if you wanna, if you wanna show that to them or present it to them or whatever. Where is the chat on this thing? I don't, I don't know how to access chat. Are they still talking about this? Yeah, I'm sitting there. I don't know if he's going to take our word on it or not. On a side note, right? Does Josh actually want to stop this fetch <laughs> of a card? That's the bigger question. Because if I was if I was Josh, I would want the chain player to. I would want the chain player to shuffle his deck. But especially when you're so late into the turn. And you still have three cards in hand, so you're not worried about that extra damage that's coming from Red Minoism that he's going to mm -hmm. go get. Mm -hmm. uh, Fun note here as well for the mm -hmm. viewers watching. Um, the star value um, is very unique. Obviously, it's not used very often. I'm not even sure if this is the only card that it's used on. Um, but they do, cl they do clarify the difference between a star and an X. Um, an X, like Sonata. Um, the double X is treated as zero in every in every place that it is, other than when it's on the stack being paid for. Um, whereas the star is treated as the value, like like mutated mass says, it has a certain attack and defense value based on a certain condition. So that condition is constantly being checked ever, at all places, even in hand. Right. So Josh took our word for it and uh chain players fetching the red minimalism that we predicted um we expect a he has shackled yet no he's have five shackles i don't believe he shackled this turn so what we'll have is he'll play the minimalism probably shadow of urser getting rid of Putting the mutated mass in the bandage zone. Mm -hmm. Shackle into a bounding. And then Rosetta. How about that? A little better. Yeah, yeah. Minoism, uh, Minoism is a very strong card. He had a red one, right? Uh, yeah, because he's good on pitch. He has two yeah. floating. Yeah. So there'd be no reason to get a blue. Correct. Um, so I guess he's shackled into the bounding, is what I'm guessing, and now... He's still at five shackles. 
Unless Josh. I missed the shackle. I mean, could have could have shackled. Josh has taken some damage here. Unless he's playing on we... creepers in the middle. No, it? yeah, here's oh. the play. Yeah, so he's yeah, doing yeah. shadow verser thing. I guess he's banking the minimalism, um, which is probably actually the correct play, knowing that Josh is holding cards. Could um, minimalism into the rift bind here. Uh, I think you get more value hold because there's only what so one non-attack, two non-attacks. Non so you have a captain's call as well. Yeah, if you play the minimalism. But I think Josh is literally taking no. this damage and everything. I like this play of the sword swing though. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the chain player definitely got this one right by holding back the minimalism, noticing Josh holding the two cards, kinda waiting to get maximum block value. Yeah. And and now he's Josh is in a real bad spot if he doesn't have if he doesn't have a blue. Um he can't you stop the I mean, what two cards would you think that he's holding on to here where he's not blocking? No, no. So the idea was he's going to hold it for the minimalism attack and then block six into it. Ah, I see what you're saying. That's what he was trying to do. I see what you're and saying. And the chain player picked up on that and said, all right, fine. I'll bank the minimalism and send the sword yep. swing. And if he has two reds, now he's eaten at least one arcane. Yeah. <laughs> Ray making fun of me so that judge call took longer than the Briar game. <laughs> he's not wrong. Uh, he's not wrong. Thanks, All right. Ray. I appreciate that. All right, now you gotta you get to uh Oh what he had a sink below. Now this I don't like this. You have a Hard in your hand that blocks for four. Why not? What's happening? I don't know. This has been happening to me commentating all night. I, mean, I feel like I'm usually pretty competent in understanding like people's plays and figuring out why they do it. But tonight it's just been like, you know what, Alex? <laughs> you just need to be quiet. You don't know anything. He took two damage to give two. Well, he. Josh is a smarter smarter player than I am when it comes to Bolton, so I typically don't question his plays, but like I don't know. I don't I don't like that one. Is he really playing Bolton though? <laughs> he's, he's just fatiguing. Yeah. <laughs> he's playing three and four block dot deck. There goes two E strikes, that sucks. Yep, so this is uh really big. You got the so as of right now the banner stone isn't loaded. You got the two red boundings, the shadow burst or might be time the for a for whatever it's worth. Might be time for some creepers action. What you think? I mean, it, it, yeah, because usually the thing you want a creepers right is a go the, again card. Is a go again card, so that way yeah. you basically get two action points off of one card. Is the idea? Yes. So if you have um, a captain's call in hand here, this this turn could get really big. Yeah, and we already got the menu that we knew about, so that's the next attack that has bust up. Okay, so this currently does not have go again, which so basically he vanishes a card. Okay, yep. So okay, now it does. Okay, so now we got five with go again, and he mm -hmm. replaced it with a red uh, ghostly Ghost visits visit. into uh, into arsenal. Yep. Which, for those of you who don't know, that's just a one cost for four, basically. Interest. So Josh is just taking two here because he wants to block as efficiently as possible because he's expecting a big turn. Expecting a big turn, and this card does not have a hit effect, so not too right. concerned with taking two here. And we have... Bounding uh, for four. Bounding for four. Has go again shackle that he just made. And just taking one here. still has Dude. luminous in his deck right that he is correct get, okay it, so like it, if, if it at some point three. if at some point he ha like draws two luminous and his opponent doesn't pre present enough damage for to like warrant getting rid of them he can gain a bunch of life with them right correct okay so 
a update on the deck count. Chain is at 26 cards. And at six shackles, that is basically two more full shackle turns. Um, and then he's gonna draw the bottom, the last four cards in the deck. So he did creepers. Okay, creepers yeah, in well, our we revel. We got a revel for four rune chance here. Okay, giving it go again. It's a big turn. Mm -hmm. um, which means go again and probably a sword swing after to just add to the arcane. Will he have an action point after this? Yeah, he gains an action point from the revel. Right, but I don't believe the ghostly had go again. Yeah, yeah, that's why he only has one more attack. So he, that, I would just say a Rosetta swing or a Rift Bond, either one. I mean, is he playing the Rift Bond? Is that what's happening? I think he's playing the Rift Bond. Okay, that that works too. The Josh is down to 15 life now. Um, his opponent's only seen one Art of War, so. Or did one get banished? Did one, did, did an Art of War get banished? Uh, no, one got pitched, one got played. There's still two. Still two in the deck, right? We don't have eyes on. Gotcha. So he just played another Sigil, which helps a bit. Yeah, but Josh is starting to get in that weird spot because the whole Lumina play that you mentioned to gain life, um, that kind of doesn't work because he's going to have to take a bunch of damage on the turn he plans on playing it. For sure. No, it's more of more along the lines of if he can set it up where, okay, there's only one blood deck card. That's, That's good, good for Josh. Yep. Um, bunch of good <laughs> cards gone. I was just thinking, like, uh, it's more along the lines of, like, uh, if he can set it up where, like, he blocks three cards, you know, blocks with three cards for a turn, and then now he has, uh, like, Lumina and Arsenal, Lumina in hand or something. Some, some some situation where he doesn't have to take a bunch of life. Well, you can't do that because you have to charge a card. Okay, so you have to charge. Okay. Yeah, so the, the minimum card count to combo is four cards. A card to attack and charge. The card yeah. that you're charging... And both luminas, and then uh, okay. of course the whole curse. So they're glorified three blocks. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now that would be a good play if it happened mid-game. If he got enough so quickly, and used that as a way to leverage, you know, basically regain life and kind of force chain to block, and you know, get even more cards from him. Um, as far as the deck counts again, Bolton. 35 cards in deck and the chain is at 17 not counting cards in or, or arsenal i think chain's getting there though um i think i think he's uh honestly he's presenting quite a lot of damage every turn he's getting some damage every turn um the only problem that bolton really has uh when he's trying to fatigue is it doesn't have um a really solid plan for mitigating like all of the four attacks like it's taking damage like constantly like if you're trying to block efficiently um whereas like a deck like you know any of the guardians have access to rampart um and right. Kranos and points, and things yep. like that where they can right. where they can take care of that little extra chip damage well crown crown of seeds is huge against anybody that deals arcane damage because you can always utilize the float and the biggest part is it puts another card into your hand that allows you to block with it so it basically makes it where you have five blockable cards every single turn yep. pitch. and you get to choose how you want to block with the damage with crown of seeds basically um also floating more resources so that you can take care of the arcane with your null rune and right. use the extra for your ramp it's just it's a bunch of silly things all right so we have an unhallowed rights uh he has not played a non-attack action so he does not get to put one on the bottom uh no that that effect always right Oh, it does? That, oh, yeah. it's, it's to you, play it from Banner's Zone. Yep. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yep. Okay. Starting out with an Unhallowed Right. Still got three cards in hand. He pitched another one of his Unhallowed Right, so if he gets back around to that later, he'll be able to recycle it, which I'm sure the game is going to go close to that long. So it seems to me like this turn is probably going to be a setup turn the chain side yeah so if if there was uh, he has the lumina too oh man still blade shot a block for four right yep that'll block for four and then i'll have one float in for any arcane that comes the 
That's why the shunts are so good in this matchup is paying that one is not as punishing because you always utilize the resources to stop parking. Yep. Yeah, shunt costing one is really, really nice for Warrior. Yeah, it goes really well with uh with two. Yeah, he had an all red hand. These all two red. Did. Yep. So this will be he... an easy two card block here. Yep. You should see just both cards fly right in front of it. Call it a day. However, what? the chain player just put two blood deck cards on the bottom of the deck and set up with a quicken token and has a swarming that's going to be ours. Yep. Not a bad place. He did have the double lumina. So do you think maybe the play would have actually been block with some armor and yeah that's um, double uh, lumina because he had it he had engulfing light charged yep. the steel blade shunt double lumina i would have done it with four <laughs> yeah i would i would have done it just for the show it might not have won yeah, yeah but i, I would have done it because <laughs> let's count let's count the damage there he presented four with unallied rights and, yeah, I mean, he only, pre only presented what nine damage there yeah um, you could have blocked one two three four you have or equipment block. Um, yeah, you right. you take five and after after seeing the chain player with no arsenal pitching a red play an unhallowed I think you have to go for it, right? I don't know. I don't know warrior well enough. I yeah. There goes a right. very key card. Alright, so one art of war gone. He got two banishes. One we won't really we're not really concerned with the, the mutated mass that much. No. Um, and he got the invert. So yeah, invert and Hal are good good hits. Um, Invert's not a good one against Bolton, actually. Um, he doesn't have the ability to, to stop all of the damage from an invert. Um, and he plays more than enough non-attack actions to, to banish. But that Art of War leaving is, is huge for, for Josh. I just thought about it. What? This is this is why we, we shouldn't say what Josh should or shouldn't do. The correct play was not to Lumina. If he would have Lumina, because he's doing the fatigue strategy, he doesn't oh, have... Uh, bet. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, Duh. Duh. Well, he has no light cards in his deck to charge. Exactly. Like so he, he wouldn't have gained any <laughs> life. He would have just taken damage and died. But, yeah, the second uh, you said that, it was, a, it was a light light bulb. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> he should have. Oh, uh, oh my goodness. That yeah. So bad. Yep. Yep. Josh is uh, Josh is playing it right. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're doing good. Keep it up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> interesting though i think that's the first how that we've seen this game so we got the bounding coming in for seven go again from the quicken token he's not utilized a shackle so we highly anticipate you know shackling into one of the mutated masses um but probably want to find something else to pitch first to buff those that's rough yeah definitely not odd. I mean in this case it's the exact same thing of having is having a two three blocks correct so it's not except for he gets one extra soul all right breaking the chain breaking the chain we still got four cards to work with on the chain side plus four banished cards so Yep, because so he gotta... can still do lots of things. The creepers is gone though. That's a that's a fun note. Yep, that's super uh, important. Super important here. Yep. All right, cards in deck. Bolton at thirty-two. Chain at eight. Chain's down to eight. Chain has eight cards in deck. And we know one of those is Art of War. He, uh, could be in a, could be in his hand or arsenal, but yeah, it could be. All right, so Chain utilized his hero ability and shackled, giving the bounding red go again. So it's coming in yep. for four. So highly anticipate just a three block take one. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what happened. And now swarming, he has made a shackle. Shackle as a. Coming so in for three go again. 
three go again, so he's probably just gonna. It's actually an interesting spot, right? Because he's got three cards in hand and still got go again. I assume he's got a defense reaction in Arsenal. It's that card has been there a hot minute. I don't yeah. know what it is. I mean, he wouldn't have. It wouldn't be like a sink below or something because he would have just used it on the bounding, right? Not necessarily because you run the risk of like not having another four attack. Ooh, this could actually be a big turn if that's a blue in his hand. He's got he's out of he's empty handed, so if he takes two and that's not a defense reaction, he pitches and howl from beyonds into like a mutated mass or something. And uh it could yeah, be quite a bit damage. quite a bit of damage. The question is it does the card in his hand cost more than zero because it can't match the bounding to buff the mutated masses is it it's pitch value right like as in like blue strip yellow strip red strip or oh, it, I, okay. or, or or is it or is it like actual cost of the card okay so i i'm not sure uh okay it doesn't matter it's resetting yep um it, well, it wouldn't matter anyway because he wouldn't have the pitch to play the how if it wasn't a blue so Josh is getting pretty low on life. And I don't like the fact that he said that Arsenal card not doing nothing. All right. So mm. cards in deck is five. So this is it. These are the last cards in the deck here. Josh has to live through this turn. If one of and... these is Art of War, this is going to be very good for him. It is not. All right. So he has to live through this turn, whatever this turn is. Well, he's not technically safe after, because... Oh, no, he's he is far from safe right now with Unhallowed Rights, Howl from Beyond still being yeah, cycled. Yeah. So th there's some things that he has to... Uh... Well, I'm assuming we're going to see a pretty big... Art of War turn here, but um, fun fact on Art of War the last turn of the game, you don't draw anything, so. Those <laughs> are true statements. <laughs> it actually makes um, it uh, just a pitch card. Yep. Uh, it really does. So, but he... you can still give go again, so like it still does something, but like you just choose go again plus one instead. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is why you do not shuffle your deck. Michael Wouldn't Dalton try. says mutated mass is cost, not pitch value. Okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was cost. Um, I was not sure. So I hopefully this you know, this is just like lesson learned on why not to not to shuffle the deck when you're being fatigued. <laughs> just ruin all that hard work of pitch stacking. Because he was doing it he was pitching his red blood deck cards, you know, mm -hmm. waiting for that moment. Well, you just and, shuffle them all back up and say, Let the gods deal my hands. Biggest question is, he pitched the Mavrian, right? And we know it's the last Mavrian. Does he have another go again card or was that his only blue? If that is his only blue, then that changes the game drastically. If the Mavrian guys is, is that what you're saying? Yes. Because typically, if he, if he had any other blue, right? You're going to play the Mavrian. Like, 90% of the time, right? Because it's just so good here. He All does right. not have another blue. That has been confirmed. He just pitched a red. Not completely confirmed, because he doesn't want to play two reeks in one turn. That's sure. Oh, he's got sink below. That's good. For the full block here. Huh? Good old even block. Uh, Josh still has access to three armor. He didn't sink below here, which means he has more block in his hand, so I'm assuming he has another one. Because if, uh, if I have two, three blocks in my hand, there's no reason not to dig for another sink, right? Um, I think it's more of a, I don't want a shunt. Okay, kind of situation. so here's the last three cards in his deck. Ghostly Visit, Reek of Corruption, and Mob Skies. Yes, uh, and there's only one blue there. So uh, I think that that means Josh wins. I think this game's over, and 
I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are no non-attack actions left other than Mob's Guys. Correct. Which is so, his only blue. Um, he still can play an Unhallowed Rites, but he would require him to play the Mob's Guys out to even play the Unhallowed Rites to get right. a red card back in his deck, and then he would have no blue cards left. Yep. So, um, he's going to get wrecked by this pitch deck, I think. He... Yeah. Or the lack of pitch stacking because of the shuffle. Right. So it's not that the... Just to clarify, it's not that the chain did a bad job of pitch stacking. He actually did really well in the beginning yeah. of the game. The but belittle he went, just messed everything yeah, up. He played a belittle, fetched a minnowism, that shuffled the deck, messed everything up, and now um, everything... Just a random... So this okay, is... So here goes, here goes the play I was talking about. Yep, yeah, so he's just doing a last-ditch effort, basically. And this is, this is actually when I was referencing earlier that sometimes you just want that blue non-attack yeah. action. Why is he shackling is, this? Uh, for sure. Shackle doesn't even matter because he, he just doesn't have the pitch to play anything. Literally. Like, well, he's going to die to his own blood debt. I mean, I don't think there's any way that he can win this game, but no. if you're playing optimally, I feel like you mob skies into that save the shackle for our pitch to invert to get an invert out of the graveyard and i think it's hilarious that these mutated masses are going to kill him <laughs> <laughs> see like that that's my thought process is like obviously if if the card those mutated masses have been there for a while five six turns however long that's so if they're right. not good enough to while, while he's been playing blue boundings and mm -hmm. in those cards like mm -hmm. if it's not better than that then why is it there is is the question that that i would ask myself yep and whether to play that card or not um there's no shot that like i don't know when i was building the deck there's there's no shot that i could play that card like there was just always a better option Especially in a format where blocking is so important. Right. Alright. So he used pitch for the skull cap and then used the one floating to shunt the weapon, which deals one damage. In case people didn't know about that. Yep. Interaction. Oop. It's also a terrible way to die. <laughs> <laughs> one of my very first lessons I learned in Flesh and Blood was that Don't steel blade one was, was that steel blade shunt kills people. I died at one against a, a Dorinthia, and never again did I ever go to one against a warrior. I mean, the best he can do here, he's got what Halfon Beyond, Ghostly Visit, and Reek of Corruption, I believe, are his three cards. So the best he can do is just play out these last couple of cards, have them get blocked and concede. That's, that's all I see. Yep. Here goes the first mutated mass for... All right, it's coming uh, in for four. Four. We're in hot for four. Coming in hot. Right into the face of a sink below. Or a three block. <laughs> you said mutated ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. Alright, and then we got a... He's gonna pitch a blue error. and stop this, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, he could just take it. It's not... I mean, the game's... The game's Definitely not doesn't want to take it if he can help it, but... Sure, but it's not changing anything even if he does. Yeah, he banished that Lumina Ascension. <laughs> he had the blue. Oh. He had the blue. Always got to save the blue. All right. He goes Centauri Saber him. Jump. That's All right. right. Here comes the kill. Or Sigil. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Yeah. That, that's that's that, where you scoop. Yep. That's where you scoop. There's I mean, no point scooped playing three turns ago, but... Yep. 
He, I think he could block out with his cheek and probably still live. GG, guys, GG. So we're going to be two all after this match, and it is all up to Sebastian. Yeah, however, that one's not being played tonight, correct? Correct. It will be played yeah. tomorrow night, I believe. Right. Hope everybody enjoyed watching the stream. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is a uh, competitive league. There's what uh, upwards of what 15 different teams, probably. Yeah, something we've got like, like four that. different divisions or something like that. Or yeah, like quite a few. Yeah, I think I think 15 is probably pretty accurate. And and the structure of the tournament is there is a five week process where uh, it's five games on each team. Yeah, you uh, play every team once, I believe. Yep, and uh, it's best of five, and then after f five weeks, you have a playoff, and uh, we just like to stream the events. It's good content. It gives us the opportunity to, uh, you know, get practice in against great players because, you know, there's a ton of good players. Um, you know, you got um, people like uh, Michael Hamilton's on one team, uh, just played against Sam uh, at the beginning of the stream. Just Nathan, really... I want to pa pause real quick to appreciate some hilarity here. Oh, yeah. Go for it. He has no cards left in his deck and nothing to banish, and Josh drew impenetrable belief, belief, so it actually doesn't get the buff right here. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a Hal from Beyond uh, that cannot be cast. That's hilarious. <laughs> He could play Hal from Beyond with his three card hand and then have nothing to play with it. That is. There's actually... some some funny things going on here. Oh, Carrie and Huskin get eaten a lot. Why are we still playing this game? I'm uh, not sure. I mean, he's literally just sword swinging every turn. I mean, he can start swinging with whatever he wants. This guy doesn't have any cards in his hand. Make a rune champ pass. Take a blood debt. That's so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Well, Josh is about to attack him for lethal. He said, "I'm going." Josh has 18 cards in hand. For anybody wondering, <laughs> he, he's charging his defense reactions because he knows he's not using them. There's nothing to worry about anymore. I'm not sure why this game is still being played. Well, break courage because what? Boy, <laughs> Because <laughs> why not? Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, he's... <laughs> that'll do, pig. That'll do. That gets it done. He said, you know what? We're going to close it out in fashion. And he said, we're still going to combo. And he doesn't burn the cards, which is exactly what you want here. And he's going to trigger the bracers to plus one because the first one hit coming in for four or six and then the he'll swing two more times for three or five uh, and when we say three or five it's if chain blocks attack action pumps it by two aka game yeah and chain is officially on zero line the All game right. That was uh, that was a tight game actually. Um, I think there were a few plays that Chain made that maybe could have improved his odds of winning that game. But um, yep. over overall, um, Josh's game plan was, I mean, he, I mean he had yeah, yeah he knew so, I mean, he knew what he was doing. So um, we can get Josh in here to explain the intricacies of how he blocked forty turns in a row. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there, there wasn't any, like, strong decision points, right? Uh, yeah. Block with this three block, block with this four block. Game. But... I'm, cur I'm curious to know if uh, if uh, Josh brings up the shuffle. When he's gone. Yeah, let's ask him real quick. Let's get him in here. Because I think that's what decided the game, was the fact that he shuffled the deck. But All before, right, before you guys leave, before you guys leave, this was a fantastic evening. This was uh, four games, I believe. Wait, wait, four? Four games, right? Yeah. Yeah, four. Uh, the series is now tied 2-2 two to two against Fab Foundry, and uh, 
We are excited to see who wins with the fifth match Sebastian will be playing. Uh, we're going to get Josh in here to do a quick rundown of his last match there. Um, but uh, I would give you guys one second just to tell you about um, a few things we've got going on right now. Um, our Patreon, if you go to patreon.com slash the card guys, um, Josh, Nathan, and uh, myself, and Sebastian, everybody on the team, we all pr uh, produce articles and videos and things uh, exclusively with uh, deck profiles and deck lists and everything to get you guys ready for any competitive seasons that you uh, might be interested in. Uh, we also offer a bunch of services involving like helping you with deck lists, and uh, we're going to have events for Patreon exclusive. Um, uh, things like, uh, like <clears throat> tournaments and giveaways and all these fun things. And uh, and we also have some merchandise coming out that you'll get discounts on and everything. So if you like that sort of thing and you would like to subscribe, uh, feel free to hop over there. We have a Discord with a largely growing community, and it is going to be a very good time. The longer it goes, the greater the community gets, and the more people we'll have in there, the more opportunity you will have to succeed and play against uh, fantastic players. But... Now that I've got that out of the way, Josh is back from his match and he wants to talk uh, a second about it. Um, there was a, a lot of blocking in that game, Josh. Uh, were there any intricacies or anything you want to talk about? There, um, there, were, game? there were two instances that I really wanted to talk about. So okay. there was a turn where he played Exude Confidence and I got caught with a shunt and a sink below. And I was like, this is going to hurt a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yep. So I, I leaked a ton of damage there, and that was basically the turn I decided, like, I'm never going to combo in this game, basically. Yep. Uh, because I took too much damage there, I can't take another round of damage and still close out the game. Um, and then there was another... Uh, there was a very... It was very, very funny, because I had Lumina in Arsenal, and then I drew into a double Lumina. Yeah. So, but I didn't have Snapdragon, so I had an Engulfing Light. And another card. So if I had Snapdragons, I could have gone for it. But because I didn't have Snapdragons, I had to pass up on a triple Lumina combo. <laughs> wow. So I was like, all right, I just have to throw these Luminas in front of these things. Um, yeah, that that was a. Uh, I kind of played it down the middle. I was like, if I can find a combo in a reasonable amount of time then I'll combo, but... We were also talking I, about, if like, if fatigue, you... Would, would, would the combo be worth it because of how many non-light cards you have in your deck with the game plan you were playing? Uh, you, you'd probably... Uh, you'd probably gain 8 health instead of, like, 10 or 12. Um, okay. There's a giant... The, the thing is, with, with Husk and his fridge on the other side and not have the Gallantry Gold, that actually increases the amount of cards I needed to. Um, there was a there was another instance where I had like Beacon and Lumina, and I could have gone for it, but then I was like, well, if he blocks with everything, then I actually get starved on Soul. So I was like, all right, we're just blocking, I guess. <laughs> uh, so he got a very so he got a very very early Art of War turn. Yep. And then he banished his second Art of War. Yep. And then when he pitched his Art of War to play his first Art of War, mm -hmm. and then that was with 54 cards left. So right. I kept track of that Art of War, and I knew it was going to get banished on Shackle 7. So, But then the belittle to shuffle the deck through that all. Yeah, so I was like, uh, well, it is what it is now. It's up to fate. So, yep. Um, the... Yeah, we had a judge call just like we were 98 percent sure about it but he was like you know i just want to double check and i was like all right i i was pretty yeah, sure it mass. Way. yeah he yeah. was like you know we just just call a judge make sure and so the judges confirmed that yeah it was uh it, it's like a static that keeps checking yep so yep. Yeah. it's very similar to the x converted cost but it's different mm -hmm. in the fact that it always has a, a check wherever it is um hand field wherever mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Uh. So yeah, I. I guess it's tied up two two now. Yep. Everything's in Sev's hands. So Sebastian will have to try to take it down tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. I provided approximately zero help to the record tonight. 
<laughs> we, we we won't talk about that. <laughs> the, uh, I, I I'm I'm trying to figure out why I keep getting put against. Like it doesn't matter what I play, the other opponent is always getting put on the deck that is the exact counter to me. Um, but anyway, See, you 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 should play Bolton. Like I said, he has neutral matchups. Yeah. You, or you or Viscerai. <laughs> Viscerai has no bad matchups. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. Thank <music> you.